So Leticia Lamte is vying for assembly member of Anohuma Electoral Area, Okakwe North. Madam, how are you? Uh, thank you very much for coming. I'm very fine, thank you. Uh, so I know that as a woman, it's uh, pretty much of a big deal uh, when you put up your you put yourself up for uh, leadership. So uh, tell me what influenced your decision to step up and put yourself up for election as assembly member for your electoral area thank you very much for the opportunity um i had opportunity to study a bit of governance and i learned what the assembly member is supposed to do for the community so you studied the governance where at what you know so we can understand and put context to it okay i did international relations and governance at the king's university college as okay. part of my law great 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 so that that makes you uh it, it pushed up a desire in you to now step up and put yourself up for leadership how are you preparing for it how are you prepared for it maybe i should put it that way i am prepared in terms of knowledge mm -hmm. in terms of capacity and competence because i've had the opportunity in time past to be a trade unionist and a trade great. union leader great great so i know that in in this field uh it's, it's a murky area where there are a lot of challenge with campaign financing and how you get around dealing with uh mill environment i know you heard our conversation uh with uh adam who came in earlier uh on international day for the elimination of violence against women and so the reality is that these things in the workplaces is a very tough terrain for women tell me how you are dealing with the issue of male dominance and the issue of financing, you know, the day-to-day -day challenges you face in, on, on your path to, to the position of assemblywoman? I, I don't know, but um, I have dealt with the male situation way back in the past. All your life, actually. Yes. <laughs> so, um, in 1999, when I enrolled to read mechanical engineering in tech, mm. I was one of the three women that were in the class with 53 men. Ah. And so, right from there, I have had to you deal had with to it. You had to deal with it. That's unbelievable. So, <laughs> I see that you're very prepared for this kind of thing. And so, your message out there is exactly what? What are you telling your uh, constituents? Why are they supposed to vote for you what do you hope to bring on the table well my message is very simple the assembly member is supposed to be responsible for their concerns to be addressed by the um, district assembly mm. because when the government takes our taxes they refer they disseminate it to the district assemblies and so um, if it is a highway like the N1, it is the responsibility of the government. But when it is the road fr in front of your house leading to the N1, then it is the responsibility of the district assembly. And so if you do not have somebody who is advancing your course and telling the district assembly that um, the road in front of your house is bad enough that it cannot convey you to the N1, then your situation will continue to remain the same. Mm, and and we've had very terrible... Uh, financing from district and local assemblies and it's not a joke it must be difficult you coming in from this backdrop of the fact that a lot of our communities have bad roads uh, have bad drains non-existing drains etc uh, do people sometimes uh, confront you with the reality that hey we've been voting all the time and why should we vote again Exactly. That's, um, that's the biggest challenge that I have faced in this campaign because they have said that all the people who have come have made promises they are unable to fulfill. Then I say to them that, unfortunately, I don't have a promise for you yes. because it is a system. And so we all have to rally behind um, somebody so that the person will go and confront the system mm. and say that even if it is one city that came to the district assembly, then every electoral area is supposed to have a share because every member in that area contributed to that. And so whatever is our share, even if it is 20 pesos, then you make it available to us and so that we can use this for the development for our community. Mm -hmm. So tell me about uh, the other, I'm not exactly asking you to tell me the other contestants, but in terms of numbers, uh, the Anahuma electoral area, how many people are you up against? I'm against six men. Six men.
I like how you qualify it. Not six people, six men. men. Does that terrify you? Not at all. Not at all. So uh, I'm looking at the fact that you, your background, the background you explained to me uh, from being in a male-dominated class all through and the workspace makes you a little bit, well, not a little bit, makes you more confident that you, uh, you, you trump up against these people. Are you confident of winning against the six other men? Exactly. I am standing up for the election because I'm sure of the winning. Yes. Interesting. So let's talk about you. Um, your your journey to this place. You started by uh, telling us of your uh, study of international relation and your uh, law education and all of that. But you must have had uh, family linkages and networks and support systems that have got you here today. What do you want to tell us about all the support systems that made it possible for you to be who you are today, putting yourself up for leadership? Um, it would have started all the way from Wesley Girls where they tell you that you can do anything and your business is solution, not asking questions. Mm. You ask the question because you want to find a solution to it. And um, I have grown up, I have a husband, I have two children, Lovely. I have friends who support me and believe in me and think that um, I have the ability, the competency and the capacity. And so I'm here because people believe in me. And tell me about your your family, your husband, your children. Uh, I mean, I, I, I look at the Maudine Day family where wife needs to earn bread, husband needs to go, and most of the time our children get less and less of us every day. How do you juggle that? Uh, that's very fantastic. Um, my children, they are in school. And so every morning it is my responsibility to drop them off at school. Mm. And I have a little daughter who is five years, and if she doesn't see mommy, she doesn't go to bed. I know. And so, <laughs> well, in the morning when I drop them off at school, then I go about my business, daily business. They go to bed at 8, and I'm sure every day at 8 p.m. I am there and to put them to sleep. Right. So let me, let me be a little bit off tangent a bit. I know that uh, the local level assembly elections... Um, Many times, I might not have the, the, the data to back it, but many times we don't get people of your, your educational caliber. You're a well-educated woman, you're balanced, you're from a stable home where you have a family support systems, husband, children. There are not many times that you get that much highly educated people putting themselves up for leadership. And I know the trend has been changing. A lot of us molding younger generation want to now step up the plate rather than we sit there and complain about the, 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 the problem. How do you feel when you get out there and uh, perhaps that also stares in your face in your interactions with other people, engaging their level of apprehension of the situations uh, and the concerns they have? How do you feel? Well, I think that there's a lot of education that needs to be put out there. And I don't know how I do it, but I don't get offended. Um, I have you don't get offended people thinking you you're posh bourgeois educated why are you here in this dirty space I don't get offended I um, I have a petite figure a lot of people drive up to me and say why are you driving and I don't yeah. get <laughs> I don't get offended okay. I don't know how I do it but some way somehow when people think that I'm in the wrong space, I think it's time for them to know the reason why I am there instead of getting offended. Great. Offense so so let's talk about finances. Finances, finances. How do you get by? A campaign, cost of moving around. When you're engaging electorates, I'm sure that you need to be spending. And considering that there is no clear-cut uh, spending regulation where a, the state or local assembly will be funding you, how do you get around that? My family and friends have been very supportive in that area. My friends who believe in me have printed my posters and my banners. And I have a friend, uh, his name is Joseph. He sent me money all the way from UK. Um, and I think Because they believe in you. That's the spirit. But is that enough? Does that sustain? Does that cut across as okay? Well, but um, 
I am a person who believes that you have to live within your means. And so I'm trying to manage the resource that is available to me um, to manage uh, the campaign that is in front of me. So where do you come from, as in your hometown? Well, I am a girl. You're a girl. And so I come from... Okay, so I was thinking Lamte is your husband's name, but that's your name. Good. So you come from uh, Lante Janwe. (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's yeah. a, that would have been the clan, but um, the area itself is called in Sakina around in Sakina, Kumas, Masama yeah, area. In Sakina. Yes. My brother in law, my wife's uh, husband, is also Lamte. My mm. sister is Doris Lamte, and they come from uh, Obakroa near to in Sakina, same mm. area. Mm. So, Obomdomiabra area. Yeah. So, great. So, uh, you, you, you have, you, uh, so, so I, I know, I wanted to ask you that in this electoral area, your your decision to go out there was it based on the fact that you live there? I do live there. I lived live there. there for sixteen years. Okay, so Madam, we are grateful that you came through. Uh, we wish you the very best in your endeavor. To I mean, if I I, I was a voter in your place, I'll vote for you because we need more of your kind putting themselves up for leadership. Thank you very much, and we wish you the very best in in this pursuit. Thank you very much to all listeners of 3FM. The number is number two on the ballot of Anahoma Electoral Area. The name yeah, is Tisha yeah. Lamte and the only woman on that ballot. Vote Thank for the woman. Much. Thank you very much and thanks for coming.